You've become a role model in this country. The reason that your book sells, the reason that your board game sells, is because people are looking to leaders. People are looking for values. People are talking about you know, Donald Trump for president. What they're really talking about is Donald Trump, show us the way. Right now, we're the highest taxed country in the world. Under my plan, we cut not only taxes for the middle class, but we cut taxes for corporations. We will bring back trillions of dollars. That's offshore. Right now, they have two and a half trillion dollars. All of that money is going to come back. And we're not going to lose Pfizer, which is now leaving, and other great companies. We're not going to lose them anymore because we're going to have a tax structure that is going to keep them in our country. You're going to build a plant in Mexico, and every car and truck and park that you sell, it comes right through the border, and you know what? You're going to pay 35% tax on those cars, and those cars, and those cars. Because it doesn't help us. You fight ISIS first. These are animals. You have to knock them out. You have to knock them off strong. You decide what to do after. You can't fight two wars at one time. If you listen to him and you listen to some of the folks, that's why we've been in the Middle East for 15 years, and we haven't won anything. We've spent $5 trillion in the Middle East because of thinking like that. But when you see the politicians and you say, man, that's a bad deal. That's such a stupid deal. How can anybody be so stupid? The reason is the politicians are being taken care of by their lobbyists and their special interests. And this is on both sides. This is on the Republican side, the Democrat side. Money just pouring into commercials. We are not going to be controlled by people that are special interests and lobbyists that everybody here has contributed to. And you know what? They do exactly what those folks want them to do. I'm self-funding my campaign. I'm putting up all my own money. Nobody knows the game better than me. Nobody knows the game better than me. Obama got every single thing he wanted. He got where the migrants can come into our country. He got funding for the illegal immigrants. You take a look at the migration and you say, that's strange. So many men, strong, young men, not many women, not many children. I'm saying, what's going on over here? And this is going to be a real wall. This is going to be a wall that's going to stop the heroin and the drugs from coming to New Hampshire, believe me. This is going to stop it. Everybody's changed their messaging to try to copy you, whether it's Cruz, Rubio. I mean, everybody has taken a turn for tougher talk. So you've had an impact already. Nobody's going to be able to do it like me. Nobody has an example on the wall. Nobody is getting Mexico to pay for the wall, the cost of the wall, but me. They don't even know about that. It's not even in their vocabulary. But is your dad a moderate, a liberal? What is it? I think he's an anti-waste, and he just, he believes in efficiency. He doesn't believe in nonsense. He doesn't believe in waste. You can't leave the White House, go to Hawaii and play golf for three weeks and be a real deal maker. It doesn't work that way. You have to get people in, grab them, hug them, kiss them, and get the deal done. But it's got to be the deal that you want. Fifteen years ago, they wanted to build a wall. You know why they didn't build it? They couldn't get an environmental impact statement approved. It's true. They couldn't because there were snakes, toads, rodents, all sorts of crap right in the way. Does anybody want to take a ride? We gave them... <laughs> Thank you.
if we had a real, if we had a real, hello, hello. Thank you, Seattle, for being one of the most progressive cities in the United States of America. We, we want an opportunity to address. We want an opportunity okay. to address. Okay. Well, ask him. Okay. Let him and Chuck, and we'll shut him at the beginning. Okay. Now. If you do not listen to her, no, no, your no. event will be shut down right now. Right now. Your decision. Make a decision now. That's your attitude that I have nothing to say. We will give you, we will give you, how long do you want? Okay. All right, so we are trying to be reasonable. We are trying to be reasonable. We are trying to be reasonable. We are reasonable. We are trying. We're going to give you, we're going to let you on the mic. We're going to let you on the mic. That's not happening with Trump, folks. That's not happening with Trump. The microphone, they just took the whole place over. And the audience, which liked him, I mean, they were him. They're saying, what's going on? How can this happen? That will never happen with me. But I guarantee if we sit down with some of them within a short period of time, what are we asking? We want our country to be great again. We want jobs to be brought back. I mean, there's really nothing radical. We want good health care. Obamacare is a disaster. We're going to repeal it and replace it. We want good health care. Think of it. You have to stick up for your rights. When you're treated badly, you have to stick up for your rights. You have to do it. And whether we like it or not, whether it's something we want to do or not, we have to stick up for ourselves as people, and we have to stick up for our country when we're being mistreated. Remember that. $21 trillion. Oh, we have a, a woman just fainted. Do you have water? Get some water over there right away, please. Right away. Get some water over. We love our people. We got to take care of our people. No, we got to take care of our people. We got to take care of our people. Who cares? We'll hold it for a couple of minutes, okay? We got to take care of our people. These are great people. She was here. You know, some of these people came at 7 o'clock in the morning, and we got to take care of our people. I love her, too. Just tell her to take it easy. Take it easy. Is she doing all right? I love her. I love these people. They're well. I love you people. What makes your father tick? Work. Uh, honestly, work and family. He's the last man you'll ever see that'll take three weeks and go to Aspen or three weeks and go somewhere. I mean, he loves he loves work. And regardless of who he was meeting with, if we called, he took the phone. I mean, from when we were six years old, I'd call. He'd be negotiating with the CEO of a major bank, and he would make them wait. He'd take the call from us. Our times together were learning, you know, playing in his office. He would always sneak me down to uh, get a candy bar, you know, in the lobby. For you, always, always go into a field that you love. you got to love it. You gotta love it. If you don't love it, you're not gonna be successful. Even if people say, oh, you shouldn't, you gotta love it. She's surrounded by doctors. She's surrounded by doctors. No thanks to Obamacare, that I can tell you. No? And by the way, the police, they're over there, they do a great job. They are great. They are. They're getting pretty well beat up. These are great people. And it's not me. I'm a messenger in a sense. It's all of us. It's a movement. I'm telling you. It's a movement. It's a movement. Who is the person, though? Raise your hand. Who's the person that took action over there? Well, come here. I love these guys. I love these guys. I love these people. Come here. He's a great public speaker, this guy. Uh... <laughs> I got two tours of Iraq, I'm a Richmond County deputy. If it wasn't 
wasn't for Mr. Trump right here, I don't think any of us would have the voice that we have. This is the only man that's going to really bring America back. He understands what it means for me and my people out here who have been to, have, have been to, to war. Please, everything you talk about, Mr. Trump, I can promise you right now, my department and the departments around me, we need you. People really break down what he's trying to say. There's no malice in there. He's just cutting through the nonsense and getting to the point and not wasting time. That's what he does. He's true to himself and he speaks in a way that the average person can understand. I think that's refreshing for everyone. Look at this, huh? What a troop. A few months ago, I'm walking down the street and my daughter sees a large pothole in the middle of the New York City street. And she looks at me and she goes, Mom, Grandpa would not like that. <laughs> so it's very cute. And she's four. Well, that's where I wore an urn. I mean, he made us work. We were on construction sites and we were working. And at the end of the day, you were tired and you earned minimum wage. And you take that money that you had and you don't want to spend on something good. To say we weren't spoiled would be laughable. But we were spoiled with great education, great experiences. But we weren't the kids yeah. showing up to college with you know, a, a Ferrari. We always had to sort of earn whatever it is that we wanted. And that, I think, prevented us from doing a lot of the other things that you've seen as you know, downfalls, perhaps, in other children who have uh, similar circumstances. What do you dream about most frequently? I have good dreams just having a good life. Good family, good life, so important. You know, Bob, I see people that are very wealthy, friends of mine that are immensely wealthy people, the wealthiest people in the world. A lot of them aren't happy. They don't have a good family life. They don't have a good marriage. They don't have good kids or their kids are on drugs. And the happiest people I see are people that have a great family life. We're going to win so much that you're going to sick and tired. You're going to say, please, please, Mr. President, we're sick and tired of winning. Please let us have at least one loss. It's no longer exciting to win. And I'm going to say, no way. We're going to keep winning. And I don't care if you like it or not. Sometimes I'll tell him, like, oh, you have to, you know, slow down, but it's the only speed he knows. And I, and I kind of love that about him. I never, ever quit. I never give up. And in one way, that can be a little aggravating to people. In another way, I think it's a good thing. I will do a great job. And I'll make a lot of people happy. It'll be a very positive thing. I don't need it for myself, for my ego. I just think I do a great job. I'm working for you. I'm not working for anybody else. We're going to use common sense. We're going to use heart. We're going to use business skills. We're going to use our best people. And we're going to make America great again. Greater than ever before. And we can do that. And we're going to win. And we're going to win a lot. You veterans are incredible people. Brave beyond comprehension. And I just want to, in behalf of everybody in this country, in Iowa, but in this country, I want to thank you for the job you do. Because without you, we would not be here tonight. Thank you all very much. Fantastic people. Thank you, everybody. We're going to make it bigger and better and stronger than ever before. Bigger and better and stronger. Remember, bigger and better and stronger. And we are going to make America great again. And I love you all. I love you all. Thank you. I love you all. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.